Hi guys, this is Bhavna from Teacher Academy. For those who haven't seen our previous videos, hi, my name is Bhavna and I'm a doctor currently working in the NHS. The Teacher Academy is a group of doctors and nurses who've made the same journey as you guys a few years ago. We combine with some brilliant English teachers to help you out on your journey to come and help us out in the NHS. Today we will be speaking about the OED speaking criteria and how you can use them and enhance your speaking scope. I know everybody thinks that the speaking section is the easiest one on the OED test. Well, yes, it is in a way and in a way it isn't. This is the first practical exam you'll ever give before you come to work in the NHS or wherever you want to work. So there's a whole set of nervousness attached to the speaking section. That makes it difficult. There's a gap in between your reading, listening, writing and your speaking subtests. So obviously you lose your flow. You give your writing at about 12 o'clock-ish and then you have a gap and most people or some people they get their exam at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. So you tend to lose your flow and your train of thought and that's why the speaking exam becomes difficult. I would advise um, that people do practice their speaking and try to go through speaking towards the early stages of your OET preparation. One, it will soil your nerves. Second is that for people who are going to give the plug 2 exam or the MRCP basis as well as the nurses who will be applying for their NMC registration, the practical exams, the dentists as well, all the communication skills and the language skills that you're taught in the speaking section of the OET exam will be repeated in those practical exams. So it's important to try and have a good base here. Let's go back to the OET site and we'll go through what exactly the speaking test entails. For people who haven't given the speaking test before, or the OET exam before, then we get 20 minutes and you've got two scenarios for the speaking um, subtest. Uh, you will be doing or playing your own professional role. So if you're a nurse, you will be playing a nurse. If you're a doctor, you'll be playing a doctor. If you're a dentist, you'll be playing a dentist. If you're a physiotherapist, you'll be playing a physiotherapist. Your interviewer, or your listener will be either a patient or a client or it might be a nurse or a fellow colleague. This will simulate common scenarios when you come and work in the NHS or in a Western country. This will simulate those scenarios and will entail those cultural communications so this is like a role play and it will prepare you for your future career as a doctor or a nurse or a physiotherapist or a dentist in the NHS just guys remember that you won't be assessed by the person who is sitting in front of you your recordings will be sent to two different people and then they will be assessed by them. This is not a general English assessment. To make this marking valid and reliable, they've got specific criteria like we discussed on the writing section that they're going to test you on or mark you on. What are these criteria? So you've got 
two specific subcategories and you've got criteria in them the first one is linguistic criteria linguistic basically means language so they look at what your language is like they look at four criteria the first one is intelligibility intelligibility is how clearly the listener can understand what you're saying and your pronunciation becomes important they don't want you to have perfect crystal clear english but your english should be good enough that when you come and work for whatever organization you're going to send your oet results to they should know that when you come and work for them people will be able to understand what you're saying fluency is how smooth your english sounds are you talking too fast are you talking too slow are there significant gaps in the way that you're talking that would be your fluency which is your second linguistic criteria the third one the appropriateness of language now this becomes a little tricky because uh, they are looking at your tone and professionalism so that the listener can understand what you're saying and they don't get uncomfortable in the way that you're speaking to them for example if you're speaking to um a fellow colleague are you using appropriate language if you're speaking to a patient are you using terms which might be a bit too difficult for the patient for example um when we gave um when we took our mock test last week and we were talking about this patient who had a myocardial infarction now this is a very common word um amongst doctors and nurses but for a patient um they won't be able to understand what you're saying and then you lose marks in the appropriateness of language section resources of grammar and expression guys please make sure that uh, you are making full sentences because that's how you show the examiner that you've got enough grammar knowledge you're going to work on your grammar quite a lot on your writing section um for the speaking section try to use the same resources but just make your full sentences often what happens is um your language varies when you're writing versus when you're speaking try to use full sentences like i am sorry we're here to help you let me tell you a little bit more about a heart attack so just use full sentences and show your examiner that you can tick that box of resources in grammar and expression right the clinical communication criteria for people who are coming from foreign countries um you aren't i mean we weren't really trained on clinical communication criteria but this again becomes important for people who are going to give the blab to or the mrcp basis um i'm talking to the doctors here um it's very important that you build on these skills now rather than struggle later um clinical communication criteria you're given five subcategories relationship building understanding and incorporating providing structure information gathering and information giving let's go again to the official criteria which describes this a little further relationship building they've given us a description of what relationship building includes the first is are you initiating the interaction appropriately you need to start with appropriate greetings you need to know the name of the patient you need to know who is speaking to first before anything else when we did our mock test last week we had a number of people who were messing up 
on who they're actually talking to. Uh, they were talking to a patient's mother, but they started speaking to the patient or the patient's mother, asking them how their health was. So that, that doesn't really sound professional and it makes you look non um, I mean it makes makes you look very very um, unaware of what's going on read your task know who you're speaking to and then form an appropriate relationship by your introduction and your greeting look attentive and respectful don't ignore the patient's comfort or your listeners comfort Ask their permission and their consent to proceed. Be sensitive to embarrassing things and have a non-judgmental approach. What that means that especially if you're talking about smoking, alcohol and things, um, sexual history, if you're talking about. So these are sensitive matters. So make sure that you take the patient's consent, ask them that I'm going to ask you a few personal questions. I'm going to ask you a few questions about your lifestyle. Uh, but that's just so that I can get a good history or that I can help you out a little bit better. So just take their consent. Don't, don't just rush into things and don't sound very, very judgmental. Even if you're the world's best liver consultant, you need to take a good alcohol history, but for that you need to make that patient a bit more comfortable before you can proceed. Empathy for feelings and emotional state. Make sure that it you, you need to look empathetic. What empathetic means is that you are able to take a patient's pain, your listener's pain, and feel it like it was your own. So using silence, appropriate tone and modulations, you can show empathy and there are marks for it. Just remember that. Understanding and incorporating the patient's perspective. This is a concept which might be new to people working back home. You need to think about the patient's ideas, concerns and expectations. This is also important for people giving the plaque to and the faces here. So ideas is what the patient already knows about their situation. Concerns is what they actually want to ask. Expectations are what they could or they want to achieve through this interaction. For example, if I am a patient who's had a heart attack, I might have an idea about what an heart attack is because um, a relative of mine got it at the age of 40 and they died immediately. My concerns would be, would I also die immediately if I get a heart attack? And my expectation would be that you answer that in this interview. If you give me a lecture on what a heart attack is and how it is a blockage of one of the arteries of the heart and it's fixed by angioplasties, but then you can do a cabbage as well, but then cabbage is decided by your syntax score and it's mainly a surgical decision patient is not going to listen to you because you haven't fulfilled their ideas concerns and expectations so just be a little mindful of that you need to listen to your patient you need to pick up their cues this is a cultural barrier that we have especially if you worked in a non-western country all your life this becomes difficult for people who are coming to a foreign country at a later stage in their career picking up cultural um, cues becomes quite um, difficult so non-verbal behavior like hesitation or change in volume am i going to die doctor oh, oh 
doctor i'm not i'm not really sure is that what you mean nurse so these are basically cues on how the patient is feeling pick them up if you're comfortable in your english that's what they're judging you on the oat exam if you're comfortable in your english you should be able to listen to the person in front of you and listening doesn't mean just listening to what words they're speaking non verbal cues are quite important especially if you're quite nervous in your exam and you don't practice with another person you're going to miss out on these and you're going to score lower in this section indicators of providing structure on the last mock that we took um people weren't sequencing their interview logically we had two sections to the mock um the first was the patient was getting discharged after a heart attack and the second was that there was a medical error which was made on their previous admission you should sequence your interview by starting out with the patient's ideas concerns and expectations addressing that going a little bit back to their past history on how they came to the hospital going through their discharge and then signposting that you're going to change your topic and talking about this previous visit and then logically sequence your interview through it if you have good english you should be able to have a meaningful and a sequenced interaction rather than jumping from one topic to the other in the mock test that we did for nurses often people struggled with this and they kept on repeating i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry throughout the interview and there was no logic or no structure to their interview so make sure you're mindful of that information gathering active listening is important not only do you have to listen to the patient you have to show the examiner that you're listening to the patient how silence and pausing if a patient is crying or they're quite upset or they're talking about a death pause use a gap as a marker of your active listening verbal encouragement hmm i see i understand that echoing and repetition what do you mean by you're not able to manage at home paraphrasing for example if a patient tells you oh doctor i'm so worried my my sister told me a, another story when i understand you're worried can you tell me a little bit more on what your sister told you so you need to facilitate the patient's narrative always start with open questions and then move on to close questions for people who are going to give the plap to or the mrcp basis this is an important tip that we give to people when they're taking a good history so you always start with open ended questions tell me a little bit more about your chest pain and then you move on to the characteristics of chest pain that's how you start with information gathering on the oet speaking as well do not use compound questions or leading questions this is again the same thing that we discussed clarify statements which are vague like the sister's example that the sister had given this uh, patient a lot more information try to paraphrase and clarify this information summarize your information all right so now i've told you a little bit more about the heart attack and how it's caused and how it's treated would you like me to give you a little bit more information or would you like me to clarify things a little bit more so that's how you're going back 
and you're checking how much the patient has understood and then you ask them a few more questions depending upon their ideas concerns and expectations indicators for information giving this again goes back to your ideas concerns and expectations so so basically what that means is that if you cover your ideas concerns and expectations you should be able to score quite well in almost all of the clinical communication criteria so you establish what the patient knows you pause you encourage the patient using active listening techniques and then you discover what the patient needs so they're basically the same thing being repeated in your sections for the clinical communication criteria a useful tip for everyone um, or when you're practicing with your friends or you're practicing alone try to record um, your speaking practice and then go back to the official OET site and look at your linguistic criteria and your clinic clinical communication criteria they've given us a, a marking scheme um, and there are bands available on the linguistic criteria and on the clinical communication criteria as you can see on the left side they've given scores from 0 to 3 where 0 is ineffective use and 3 is adept use adept is good use um, to pass the exam for linguistic criteria you need to have at least a 5 uh, band and on your clinical communication criteria you need at least a 2 or more in all sections so try and grade yourself on where you stand when you're practicing in the clinical communication criteria they've given every section has been divided like we discussed so you can have a very good idea on how you're doing um, when we take our mock test as well we're going to give you clear score on your clinical communication criteria and your linguistic criteria and we will be checking that with um, trained english nurses who have been trained in ielts and oet so they will be able to give you a very good linguistic criteria and because we are doctors and nurses we will be able to judge your clinical communication really well so that should give you a very good understanding of where you stand on your um, oet speaking section so guys please make sure you practice make sure you don't take the speaking subsection lightly you don't want the section that you fail on to be speaking and this is an introduction to your future career in medicine or nursing or whatever branch you're going to come and practice with us so it's a very good introduction to what your day-to-day -day life is going to be so make sure you cover that really really well this is, is your base make sure you have a good foundation for any questions the comment box below we're going to be checking that regularly and answering your queries and please like share and subscribe we, we try and make these videos at odd hours uh, and we come from the hospital really really tired and still go through making these videos so your encouragement is is very very helpful i hope you guys do really well 